Great. Um, you kind of uh, touched on this in the beginning uh, in your beginning speech, but uh, what is your perception of the future of deep development, development with regards to historic preservation? Again, I, 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 for, for me, you come at it a couple of different ways. Well, one is you just walk down the streets and I love the place. I mean, you, you just kind of love it because it is so different than, than most of the neighborhoods that you have in Dallas. So you got that. The second thing I tell you is from just a hard business standpoint, you want to preserve it too. Because again, you've got a different kind of positioning, a different segmentation, a different kind of branding that goes into that to kind of throw too many business words in there. But that's what's special about it. That's what we need to sell in deep metal, and that's what sets it apart. That's what gives it its advantage. So I think that you'll see, be it on individual situations, or hopefully as we work with um, larger landowners that are making a commitment to do things in, in deep metal, that, uh, and, and I think that will be the case, they'll make the commitment themselves with support from the city as opposed to vice versa, but they'll make the commitment to do this sort of thing, to save the facades and really kind of continue to maintain the, the, the character of the, the area. Again, I think however, it, it's one of those great things where it's a win-win. You want to do it for all the historic reasons, but it's also you want to do it because if you don't, you're going to lose the advantage of it. Otherwise, you're just going to be in any other neighborhood kind of competing across the board. That's not going to lead to success. Thank you. I enjoyed that answer. <laughs> How do you see Dallas in 2010, and how are you? How are the city leaders going to work to make building expansion more accessible? And then, um, just with that, what is your personal vision for Dallas, and how does development fit into that? You know, I am awfully optimistic about Dallas. Um, you look across this country today, and I, I was with uh, a group of mayors at the U.S. Conference of, of Mayors last week, and I can tell you, a lot of the conversation was 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 pretty dour. Um, not a lot of smiles going around. Well, in Dallas, I think we're real fortunate. That certainly doesn't say some of the economic challenges that are going across the country that we're going to be immune from. But, you know, we've got an economy that's doing much better than other places, which gives us the option. You, you look at the events of today, but you look at them just kind of day to day to day to day, the sorts of things that even happened on Wednesday. We saw new business opportunities come in. You know, I think we saw ourselves effectively dealing with issues and dealing with them expeditiously, which you're not seeing in a lot of cities, and you're clearly not seeing at a lot of state levels and at the, and at the federal level. So I'm awfully optimistic about where it goes. Um, I think that we're going to be able to do that, but it's also going to take, and deep element applies here, a willingness to invest in this, this city. And that's no different than, you know, what I say a number of times. Your household or businesses, if you're not willing to invest in it, you shouldn't expect to have success. If we're willing to invest in it, then I don't think anybody stops us. You kind of step back and see what kind of the 2010, 2012 can be. And I've got to tell you, I don't think there's any city that can, that, that can match with us. I think we start out, first of all, with advantages on people. I, I, I think that if you visit with the people in Dallas, and this is going to be especially important over the next couple of years, there is more optimism, more belief in tomorrow than there is any other place in, in, in the nation, especially if you take out other places in, in, in Texas. Te Texas uh, there's other cities that are doing well too, Houston and that. But you go beyond it, you know, this optimism is going to be awfully, awfully valuable. Kind of that belief in, in, in tomorrow. Then, then you kind of step back and look at what's happening in kind of this, this great area. Well, by that time, we're going to have clearly the finest arts district any place in, 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 in the nation. And, and it's not just the buildings. I mean, people are committed to performances. And you've got a community that's jumped in and said, hey, you know, we're willing to invest in this. More million dollar gifts than any other philanthropic effort anywhere in this country in the history of, of, of the country. You look down and you see what's happening at, at Victory. And these are all important things because as that investment goes, people are going to find different opportunities and Deep Ellen is going to rise with, with it too. But Victory things that again, 10 years ago, um, I, as I said Wednesday, I used to look out at Victory, what is now Victory. And I had an office that overlooked Dad, from, from downtown that overlooked Dad. It was a brownfield site that was worth about $16 million that had old, vacant, decrepit, abandoned industrial structures on it. Today it's got a potential tax base of about $3.8 million. And again, imagine if we hadn't moved forward, if we weren't willing to, what would happen there. So I think you've got all of that elements. I think you've got just the fact that you're in this room talking about what deep element can be and kind of maintaining the character. And what I use is that word of, of, of brand. I think you're going to have, and you're seeing it now, more investment in the downtown area. AT&T is going to go into the downtown, the Dallas area. So I think that becomes significant too. I think we're moving forward with the convention center hotel, which will take another area of downtown that, to be truthful with you, has been kind of forgotten for a period of time. And all of a sudden, bring that in, and then you're going to have bridges between there and between the areas that come into the West End and, and those sorts of things. I think you're seeing already today, and we did some work 
just on Wednesday. They'll bring about 1,800 jobs down to the inland port. So we're starting to see some things happen in places that have never happened in Dallas before, and that's the southern part of our city, the, the, the southern and western part. And you're starting to see housing, uh, housing projects. We, we turned the dirt on two of them in the last month and a half or two months, and it was great because you had Habitat for Humanity, you had the city of Dallas, and you had a private a home building, but we're all involved in those. So I think you're going to see more and more and more building. Now I'm a believer that by the time we get to that time, we're going to have to have a bond program that's got a housing trust fund that's going to provide uh, a capital base to, 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 to do additional housing and, and, and that, 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 that's, that sort of thing that goes into it. Uh, I think that we're being successful on other major issues, some that don't go into kind of the physical features of, of, of Dallas, um, but, but things like um, seeing reductions in crime. We're down 11% of year to date or year over year in violent crimes, all crimes going down. It's a big challenge. We can get in this position in a year. We're not going to get out of it in a year. But we're making the progress. And it's not only putting additional officers there, which is the commitment, but things like beat policing and doing other things like that. Really some creative things that, 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 that we're doing. We're building the, you know, the, the equipment in the fire and rescue department and, and, and things like that in other areas. Code compliance, which we haven't talked about, but is absolutely critical to the success of Deep Elm as well as other co uh, communities. We were kind of almost starting off with a, uh, with, with a blank piece of paper. We put new leadership in there. It's organized different. We've taken people out of City Hall and thrown them back into the neighborhoods. We've told them that you don't have functional responsibility for dogs, for trash. You've got responsibilities for areas because you don't look at trash dogs. You look at the quality of areas. That's what it should be. And build in accountability with report cards for those individuals and, the, and the, those sorts of things. And we're doing that. And then you step back with, with all the good things that are happening. And then you kind of step back and say, and on top of it, in about that time frame, we've got the potential to bring the Trinity into play. And that is a project that will give us options on infrastructure type of things. Uh, flood control that we've never had to give safety. It doesn't take long to understand when you look at what's happening in the Midwest now, why things like that are important and they're way overdue. It gives us transportation. Transportation to eliminate some of the issues we've got in downtown, but also in north and south because everything comes together in that mix master. Gives us recreation that we've never had. Long walk, but you can walk from Deep Elm to get to the man-made lakes and, and, and those sorts of things and tie it in. And all of a sudden, then you've got dart lines that come between those areas and two new dart lines that are coming into the, 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 the Deep Elm area. You know, I got to tell you, I'm, you know, it, and it's probably easier for me to sell the city because I'm not one of the people that, um, that, that grew up in Dallas all my life. You know, my, my wife and I made a decision to come here. And it was a decision that said we wanted to live in Dallas and we saw a lot of great opportunities. And I hope it's that optimism that everybody else shares. Because i got to tell you, if we do the right things, now there's a lot of caveats on it. We better work together. I think we found out for too long that when one city, one part of the city plays off against another part of the city, that doesn't work. If we work together, we're going to succeed. If we're willing to make the investments and take some risk here and there. I mean, life is based on risk. People tell you we don't take any risk. They basically have given up on life, in my, in, in my view. We're willing to take a risk and take some risk in, in Deep Elm, too, to believe that thing, good things can happen. i got to tell you, I'm awful optimistic about it. I've gone on much too long, but uh, it's an easy question. It's a fun question, because I think there's an awful lot of good things to talk about. Great. Well, uh, that's all. Let's thank the mayor for answering questions.